Welcome to uh, Coastal Forage and with Craig Evans. Uh, this morning we are down on um, a place called Wally Point in Carmarthenshire. And if you look behind us, there's the River Tarv Estuary and the sand dunes uh, looking towards uh, the village of Pendine and the uh, uh, beach where the world speed records have uh, been broken. And further than that, you can then see um, Caldy Island across Carmarthen Bay. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go down, um, down to the shore and with some oysters which I gathered uh, yesterday, we're going to have some, um, give you some ideas on how to use the oysters uh, for some Christmas gifts. Right, we're in, uh, in this overhang now, uh, protecting this uh, rocks on fire. And uh, Clay was here now, behaving himself this time. I apologise for last time, but uh, he was uh, barking profusely out the camera because he wanted to play with a stone. Uh, so apologise for that, and uh, this time it's not going to happen. So, uh, yeah. So, enjoy. Oh, well, yeah. Right, we're on the on the shore now, and uh, we just come across this lovely spindle bush, which is uh, an understory native tree, uh, totally native to to the UK. And uh, what's interesting about these is uh, spindle itself. It's uh, known as uh, spindle because the um, the wood of them was used to make spindles for the knitting and spinning in industry. Very, very hard wood. Um, it's got some lovely looking berries on it this time of year. A lovely uh, pink colour with uh, orange berries in. Even though they look quite pretty, they're actually poisonous. So uh, don't eat them. And the leaves, uh, even though it's uh, mid-October, sorry, even though it's November, mid-November, the leaves haven't turned colour yet because it's uh, quite warm and sheltered down here and uh, the, the leaves actually go a bright red uh, so in a couple of weeks they'll go bright red and like I say these 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 berries are uh, quite uh, quite photogenic uh, something interesting about the plant itself uh, farmers don't like these because uh, the buds I believe they're uh, a winter home for the bee aphid so when you get your uh, black fly on things like your broad beans and things, uh, that's where they tend to overwinter. But it's all part of nature. Yeah, one of my favourite trees, Spindle. Right, today then, we're going to uh, make some pickled oysters. And as part of the pickled marinade, we're going to use uh, wild garlic, rose hips, and some of this delicious rock samphire, member of the carrot family. So uh, this normally goes to seed this time of year, but uh, down here in the microclimate, it's still, you know, uh, still edible and prime for eating and pickling. It's uh, like I say, member of the carrot family, and just uh, give it a taste. Mm. Intense carrot flavour. So we'll harvest some of this now. Not too much. We just want to uh, make a bit of flavour with the uh, garlic, uh, rose hips, and uh, white wine and cider vinegar. Right, we're down in Wally Point Headland now, down uh, near the, uh, the high tide level, 
and behind us we can see uh, some of the geology which is uh, you can see the red sandstone and the other layers of the, the greeny sandstones now the red sandstone was formed uh, in uh, desert conditions around about 340 million years ago and uh, because of the iron content and the minerals that's what makes the farmland uh, in this area particularly fertile so it's a nice part of the world nice geology and where I'm actually sitting is in the splash zone of the tide right a few like here now uh, one of uh, the most important is is this tar lichen and the lichen is a symbiotic relationship between uh, fungi and an algae uh, the fungi is actually dissolving the rock and the um, the algae is making use of those minerals and the uh, algae part of it is photosynthesizing is providing the fungi with uh, sugars now um, tar lichen is one of it, it is the most salt tolerant of all the lichens it's the first one you find um, terrestrial organism that you get above uh, the tide level as you go up then you get uh, the lichens which are not so salt tolerant but are happy to live in the splash zone and many uh, different species of them uh, you can see there's uh, oranges, greens, um, you know, silvery coloured ones. And uh, yeah, just because it's a rock doesn't mean it's uh, devoid of life. Very interesting. Right then, so uh, the whole point of coming here today is that we're going to cook up some oysters and we're going to uh, pickle them for. Uh, a Christmas gift so just to show you the difference now these are uh, introduced Pacific uh, rock oysters or gigas species and these are the native flat oysters Austria edulis now, these uh, are prolific all down suitable habitats around the UK coast so what we're going to do is we're going to use these because the meat is, uh, is much bigger and I've got a dozen of these uh, native oysters of which uh, we're going to distribute uh, back in the back in the sea here. Uh, they were um, they were they were harvested, foraged about 20 miles away. Right, let's not randomly throw these now uh, into the sea, sediment bottom, and hopefully they'll breed. See if I can make them skip. doesn't go on. Right, we've got some uh, natural flavourings now for our oyster pickle mix. Uh, but before we do that, let's explain that we're going to pickle it in white wine vinegar. And when you're pickling, it's important to have uh, a vinegar which is uh, more than 5% um, acetic acid. Anything less uh, will mean that the uh, what you're picking won't be preserved. So this is white wine vinegar at 6% and this, I'm going to put just a bit of flavour, this this is some uh, organic uh, apple cider vinegar. I'll put a bit of that in for flavour. I'm going to put it into uh, this nice sealed jar with my, uh, with my logo on the top. Proud of that. But the flavourings are, we've got some um, wild garlic so which has been washed we'll cut that off like so cut the roots off now normally when I'm uh, cooking and stir frying things in butter on the beach I, I chop this up very very small but this time because it's going to be uh, interspersed with um, the vinegar all I'm going to do is cut them lengthways, like so, to release all the flavours inside. Like that. And I've got some rose hips, which I've de-seeded. Show you how to do that. 
top off and just scrape out uh, the seeds. Now these hopefully are going to make a nice uh, sweet flavour and give uh, give the pickle jar a nice a nice colour because the idea of today is to make some uh, gifts to give people uh, for Christmas. So apart from tasting nice and foraged, there'll be uh, you know a nice gift for somebody. Right, so we've got some of the uh, the garlic now and uh, the rose hips. Nice colour, nice flavour. Just going to reach over amongst the rock samphire. So we're going to put some of the chopped rock samphire in it. That's got an intense carrot flavour. A nice young uh, leaves. We'll leave some hole as well for, for effect. I'll just reach over and get some of the seeds which haven't quite ripened. Now these have a really really powerful flavour. So we'll mix those with our mix as well. We don't want too many so we don't do, uh, overpower the, uh, the pickling. So those are our pickle spices and uh, We'll, uh, once the oysters are cooked now, we'll um, fill the jar. Okay, right then. So what we've got here now, we've got some oysters which have been boiled. And uh, the thing is, people think, what can you do with them? And as part of the video is uh, give us some ideas how to use uh, forage item for Christmas gifts. Now, one obvious one is that oyster shells can be used as soap dishes. And they look totally natural and they look quite nice on the side of your sink. My favourite idea is uh, doing this. Once once you get them with the cup of the oyster clean you can actually uh, make them into candles and if you're making these uh, they, work, they work very well okay but if you're making these, uh, make sure that when you pour in the wax and when they're used, make sure they'll sit dead level. Because if you if you burn in the candle, the wax will melt and it'll run out. So do it that way. But if you are making them yourself, what I would recommend is that you make a few at the same time using the uh, oyster as a as a template as a mould. So in this case, once that's burnt down. Okay, you just stick another one in exactly as it is, and uh, and because um, these Giga species uh, oysters are invasive, it's a good thing to take them out of the environment and uh, make a use of them. So, as you can see, totally natural. They've grown around these rocks, and uh, and a nice, nice natural gift for somebody. The uh, the oysters now are cooked. They've been boiling for about 10 minutes and steamed, so we'll uh, get down, show you. So they done, they done nicely now, so we'll uh, take them over and open them. Right then, we've cooked some of the some of the oysters now, and they've cooled down sufficiently. Going to open them up and uh, put them into into my jar before uh, filling up with vinegar and the spices. So I'll just uh, put that to one side. On there. And these are cooled. So this this actually came off of a rock, nice flat one. Let's have a look inside this one. There we are. So that's how they come. Sometimes you get pearls in these if you're very very lucky. Yeah some people attended my courses were lucky enough to get some pearls and in, in, uh, in one case uh, we had six pearls in one oyster which uh, they were pleased with when I uh, gave them out. So we'll cut the oyster from its adductor muscle there and in this case no there's no pearls in that. So I'll go in there. Sometimes they're quite quite hard to open. Ah, there we are. 
ねクールナのクッドディダクタマスレこれだくそうねこれこれでミットンでこんにちは This one's uh, obviously a lot older, because it's thicker. And, uh, oh, not that good. Oh, oh, yeah. Quite lucky in this case, there's a little pearl there, look. One there. Any more? There's a smaller one there, look. Yeah, like I said earlier, sometimes I've had up to about six in here. So in this case, there's... No. Just a one, that's okay though. And, uh, what I'll do is... Try and clean it up and show you. Sometimes they're perfectly round. Uh, but this one is, uh, you know, it's got a bit on the end. No pearls in that. There we go. So we've got, we've got some in there now. So we'll uh, we'll pan out, go down, and uh, uh, fill it up with the vinegar and the spice mix. Right then, we're gonna make up our pickled oysters now with uh, 6% acetic acid white wine vinegar so we're going to layer up the cooked oysters with the, uh, the rock samphire and the wild garlic and the rose hips so we'll just get layer them up the oysters yeah nice and easy more garlic more samphire on the top, we just fill the jar with that much nice big plump juicy uh, Pembrokeshire oysters in this case. So plenty of the uh, wild garlic on the top, some rose hips for colour and flavour and uh, we've got a long sliced white garlic with the rock samphire leaves and some of the intensely flavoured unripe rock samphire seeds. Using the, the white wine vinegar at 6% acidity, put, put that in. Going in nicely, we want it all covered. And it's really important uh, by doing this, uh, the jars need to be sterilised, uh, but without in the open air. And they sterilise at home, so we'll fill that up with the white wine vinegar but what I've got as well I've got uh, a small uh, we put top it up with a small piece of organic uh, cider vinegar of uh, a similar 6% acidity and there you go so make sure it's all packed down nicely sealed up Right, well, here we are, the fruits of uh, our labours today, which is a nice jar of pickled uh, forage Pembrokeshire oysters, and we were lucky enough to get a, a small pearl as well, um, in the jar with my uh, logo on the top, which I'm proud of. Uh, we've got uh, the oysters, we've got uh, rock samphire, wild garlic, rose hips, and intensely flavoured rock samphire seeds which are quite unripe uh, all pickled in 6% uh, acidity uh, white wine vinegar and a similar strength uh, organic uh, apple vinegar so thank you for watching um, hope you liked the video and uh, if you like it uh, please click on the bell and subscribe but if you really want uh, to get notifications because there's problems with YouTube uh, not showing uh, my 
Uh, I think it's about 65,000 subscribers now. Uh, the videos, if you were to follow me on Facebook, uh, which is Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans, and Instagram, which is Coastal Foraging uh, with Craig, I'll be putting uh, notifications on there so you'll never miss this one again. So if I just turn around now and I'll show you where we are, we're on Camarthen Bay and Wally Point, and up uh, the estuary of the River Tarve there, you've got the township of Larne, which is uh, famous for uh, the home and final resting place of Dylan Thomas. And the show we're on is what he described as the Blue Pooled uh, Muscle Show and the Heron Priesthood Show. So a uh, lovely part of the world. Thank you for watching and see you next time.